welcome back to the channel of course today we'll be talking about dragon ball super manga chapter 59 titled ultra instinct sign or honestly i honestly prefer calling it ultra instinct omen but that's just me but hey what's up well go on welcome back to the channel so um i feel like it's been a while since i last talked about dragon ball on this channel but hey the manga reviews continue so chapter 59 features the fight against moro goku versus moro specifically and honestly it was a very entertaining chapter from a choreography standpoint in terms of how the fight was laid out it was actually pretty fun to watch well <laughs> read and scrolling through the panels like i honestly think toyotara did a good job of the chapter this month with a few well one minor or major complaint but i'll get into that later into the video as it regards to um, Moro's ability to absorb energy because I feel like we're being fed two different stories between this chapter and the fights on Namek at least but anyway let's get into it so scrolling through the chapter honestly we have Goku standing off facing off against Moro and of course Moro expresses his surprise that such a lowly life form would actually activate or achieve ultra instinct so of course Gohan and Piccolo, they kind of acknowledge that, yo, this is the the fate of the universe is at stake. And to start off the fight, it was interesting seeing Goku using air pressure. Like, he's moving so fast that he's apparently just attacking more using just the air pressure. And this is only pointed out by Jokro, who it is a recurring thing for him to point out things that the other characters can't see, apparently because of his amazing eyesight. So that's a, you know, consistent um well it's not a gag but it's a consistent um story beat story point from even way back in the universe six um saga so that's that that was cool to see now of course goku using ultra instinct omen he manages to actually dodge a lot of moro's attacks in this fight in the early sections of the fight and it's evident to see even before they even mention it in this chapter that goku definitely does have the speed advantage against Moro in this flank, he lands a decent amount of blows, catching Moro off guard, and honestly, it's what's to be expected with Ultra Instinct, but the thing that makes this fight so entertaining is that it goes against the cool cliche of, you know, a lot, unlock new form, you're dominating the big bad guy of the arc, that's not the case here, because Moro manages to actually even out our, at least, counter-attack using his magic by basically immobilizing Goku, kind of immobilizing his limbs. So definitely does have a way to counteract Ultra Instinct Omen, at least by immobilizing Goku using his magic, because even though the whole idea of this Omen form is still, you know, it's more defensive and you can dodge, your body can dodge by itself. If your limbs aren't can't move, then, or if your body can't move, then what's the point? So that was good to see that more actually has the ability to just immobilize him using magic it kind of continues the trend that this arc has been setting up that you can't go up against this guy in the traditional way and it adds to the whole refreshing factor that this arc has been having to date of course we eventually head over to yardrat who where vegeta is still trying to perfect the move he's working on to actually beat moro and at this point you can actually sense that goku is actually on earth fighting moro so that was pretty cool, but um, but I think with the whole Vegeta being on Yardrat still, it really is setting things up for Vegeta to actually be the one to defeat Moro. So it's going to be interesting to see how the next few chapters go where this fight is concerned. Um, I mean, of course, I'll get to it, but by the end of this chapter, the fight isn't over between Goku and Moro. So this arc definitely is going to go on for a little while longer, at least probably into the summer more than lightly. So there's that. Now, Moro continues to, you know, mix up the fight using different attacks. It does appear that he uses some lightning magic in this chapter, of course. There was even this one panel where Sagambo, his, <laughs> his lifeless body gets shocked as well. Of course, what was also pointed out in this chapter was the fact that Gohan and the others have already gathered the Dragon Balls. So... You know, Goku doesn't really have to worry about, you know, damaging the earth and all of that jazz and blue. So, yeah, I, I guess that was something. Um, I'm not going to lie. On the initial read of this chapter, I was kind of getting... I had to kind of look back on some panels a bit. 
uh, it's not a negative against the chapter but i was like saying like initial like for example the initial kamehameha against moro i didn't realize that when goku jumped like he turned because the moro in front of him wasn't real was an illusion so yeah i didn't realize that at first admittedly and it was cool it's cool seeing moro kind of mixing up the game it makes the battle so refreshing honestly it's cool to watch i think this is from a combat standpoint from a fighting standpoint this is one of the better chapters are one of the best chapters in this arc um probably even the whole dragon ball super manga to say the least and i would really want to see this in the anime so there's that of course we do have some limited panel time with android 17 and 18 and of course they asked if goku's back but apparently i well they asked if he's back and if he's stronger than ever but piccolo admits that they can actually sense his his key which reinforces the idea or the fact that yo ultra instinct it is a godly form godly transformation godly technique so there's definitely that um of course goku eventually gets the upper hand on moro in the fight um even though and honestly there's even this one panel where we have goku and moro like exchange blows and it looks really good i'm not gonna lie um uh, but yo honestly if you haven't read this chapter i would highly um advise or recommend checking it out but we get to the problem that i have with this chapter now and it's regarding moro's energy absorption where they're basically saying that yo if since goku is faster he can basically avoid moro's energy absorption technique but to me that doesn't make any sense because back on namek the fights in namek it was portrayed or it was shown that he could passively do it without like say necessarily aiming his hand at you so that doesn't really that doesn't really make any sense um from a consistency standpoint like yeah that that that, that doesn't make any sense because this is part of the reason why i feel like a lot of us in the dragon ball community were wondering okay yeah goku's ultra instinct but that doesn't really combat moro's ability to absorb energy so yeah the fact that you're coming with the idea that goku is just because he's faster he can avoid moro's energy absorption technique it, it doesn't really make any sense so that is definitely a negative where the chapter is concerned so yeah I, I don't know let me know your thoughts but to me it just doesn't make any sense where that's concerned um so there's definitely that but of course as we go along we find out that moro is definitely holding back on goku he hasn't been using his full power um this is after goku's like just beating him down completely so yeah but he eventually get more using his full power and basically turn the tides when with that we eventually get some scenes here with beerus mirus <laughs> beerus mirus and Whis, who we're Whis basically congratulates um mirus on training goku to the extent of um basically getting the ability to use ultra instinct omen on his own but he does reveal that he has not actually fully mastered the silver here, the master, the ultra instinct. And of course, it Reese reveals that ultra instinct omen is pretty in um it's not really stable. And basically imagine that instability causes a lot of energy while stamina drain. So basically Goku has to basically beat Moro before he fully runs out of energy. So yeah it's going to be interesting to see um how goku manages to get away with this one and probably see how vegeta factors into everything so yeah by the end we have goku admitting that he's you no know, like balancing stamina and all that isn't really his style which i don't know if that's really true yeah but hey but all in all, i thought it was a fun chapter the big problem is just the consistency where moro's energy absorption is concerned i feel like he toyotaro and toriyama probably wrote themselves into a corner with moro's ability it would have been good to see if there was a more interesting way for him to go around the energy absorption if it was consistently um showcased like it was back on namek here and seeing how goku could probably get around that but i guess this is the extremely easy and bad way out of it but all in all i thought it was a fun chapter definitely love the fight and i'm looking forward to seeing how vegeta um is going to play a role in all this because they're definitely setting up for something and despite the problems this arc may have 
having Vegeta coming out as the possible like savior of this arc, I think it's going to like leave a real big impression on a lot of persons. So what can I say? But anyways, Andrew, Chia, be sure to rate, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought about Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 59. And of course, if you haven't checked out my review on Boruto Manga Chapter 45, I definitely recommend it. Of course, be sure to let me know what you think in the comment section. Probably can link me on Discord, link in the description box, of course. And I'll see you guys in the next one.